Hello, everybody. First Friday, episode nine. We're so excited to have our first Friday happy hour back. It's the first one of uh, 2022. And it's our conversation about conservation in the forests of Kauai. This is brought to you by the Kauai Invasive Species Committee and um, the Kauai Forest Bird Recovery Project. And also um, this time we are part of the Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month, which is this month in February. Um, my name is Julia Diekmann and I work with the Kauai Forest Bird Recovery Project. In uh, in our previous uh, conversations, um, we discussed the importance of our forests for the watersheds. We also touched on Kauai's declining forest birds populations and, and talked about the forest as a sacred place, Wau Akua. We also touched on the various ways we can connect with the forest. But today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the most abundant um, tree um, that we can find here, which is um, our ohia tree. And we are gonna talk about the question, is ohia worth saving? How Kauai is managing the spread of rapid ohia death. So I have a couple of people who are joining me today to talk about this. Um, I have Kim Rogers and Brigan Klein from the Kauai Invasive Species Committee. And uh, maybe Helen, you can spotlight them. Then uh, we also have um, Kelly Harshman from the Division of Forestry and Wildlife and Kylie Lefebvre um, from CGAPS, the coordinating group of alien pest species. And helping me behind the scenes is um, Helen, Helen Chalk, also from the Kauai Invasive Species Committee. So everybody say hi. So glad you are all here and I'm looking forward to um, all your awesome information that you will share with us. Um, but before, I would like to just uh, give uh, a few housekeeping things um, that we're all on the same page. So we are using a regular Zoom meeting today. And um, as you can see, we are recording. Um, so feel free to start your video. Um, but we ask that everybody stays muted so that we don't hear any, you know, distracting background noises, dogs barking or, you know, something like that. Um, if you would like to ask a question, um, I invite you to um, use the chat function on Zoom. Um, if you are watching this um, on Facebook Live, you can also put questions there and we will monitor and ask the questions here if we see that um, you're putting them in the comment section on Facebook. Um, maybe let's try this chat function out so that everybody knows what to do. Um, maybe you can um, type in where you're joining us from today. That's always super interesting to see who's here. Um, maybe you can share your moku or maybe you can share your ahu pua'a, um, town, island, um, mauna, maybe. Um, so whatever you would like, you can share. Let's see what we have. We have Hilo, KFPFP office, <laughs> Kalaheo Kawaii, very nice. Japan, how awesome. It's always good to see where everybody's joining us from. All right, so um, now let me introduce you um, our host for this program, um, Kim Rogers. Um, she is the Kauai um, Broad Outreach Specialist for the uh, Kauai Invasive Species Committee. Kim, you have the virtual floor. <laughs> Thank you, Julia, appreciate it. And appreciate everybody for being here on your Friday, you know, Pauhana happy hour. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to start real quick with a Zoom poll. So I believe Halen is going to push that poll out for us. Uh, the question is just, it's a multiple choice question. Just click any of these that you know, if you or someone you know, like to, and then you'll complete the sentence, fish, go bird watching, surf, drink water, hike in the forest, make lay, eat fruits and vegetables, enjoy hula, check as, you know, as many of these as you would like, and then hit submit. We'll give people a few seconds to get that done. And Halen at some point, um, when you think it's appropriate, if you would share the results. 
still getting a couple answers coming in. Great. In like five more seconds. Ooh, do the countdown. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, and we're done. Okay, I will be sharing the results right now. There we go. Oh, fantastic. So, um, wow. So 94% got the, the number, oh, 97. Do you or someone you know like to hike in the forest? 97% of you said yes. 94% said you know somebody or you like to drink water. Um, so great results. I think you probably have a pretty good indication of why in particular I was asking those questions because uh, there is something that unites all of those activities, all of those interests. Um, and of course that is OHIA, right? You're not surprised to hear that. Um, Ohia, as Julia shared earlier, is the most abundant tree in our native forest. Um, and that is what we are here today to talk about. So I'm going to share screen. Got some slides for you. Everybody see that okay? Give me a thumbs up, Julia, if you can see that. Fantastic. Thanks, Julia and Bregan. So uh, the topic today is Ohia worth saving, how Koi is managing the spread of rapid Ohia death. I do wanna give a shout out to Hi Sam. This I think is our last presentation of the month. It's been a long and busy month with chock full of all kinds of activities, uh, the Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month. So thanks to everybody who's participated in that. I also wanna give a shout out to my fellow Kiskians or Kiskits, I don't know what the appropriate term would be, but. The Kauai Invasive Species Committee is celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. So a whole lot of people have spent 20 years um, working on the landscape, trying to protect our island from invasive species. So we greatly appreciate those people. Uh, so Ohia, let's talk Ohia. Um, it's scientific name, Metrosideris polymorpha. Uh, you oftentimes hear the saying, and just a few minutes ago, I was chatting with somebody and he was saying that they had just watched a movie that DLNR put out and it's called The Rain Follows the Forest. It's about eight or 10 years old, but if you Google it, you will find it. Hawaii DLNR, The Rain Follows the Forest. It's a really well done video, but the whole idea behind it is um, the importance of our watersheds in Hawaii. And basically our watersheds are just about anywhere you find a, at least on this island, an intact native Ohia forest. Uh, you wonder why you go up to Koke'e and almost every spot you go to is either rainy or muddy. Uh, well, there's a reason. So the rain follows the forest where there's trees on Kauai and lots of them, and especially Ohia, uh, you'll oftentimes run into rain or like that cloud, um, you know, you just feel the moisture in the air. I was up in Koke'e this weekend and at the first Kalalau overlook and the entire Kalalau Valley was just socked in and the air, the moisture, you could just feel it on everything. Um, so that's what Ohia does. That's what trees do, right? They help pull moisture from the air. Um, and a healthy Ohia forest is usually one that's filled with all kinds of biodiversity and it not only pulls moisture from the air, but it works as a sponge to hold water in place and to refill our aquifers so that we do have water to drink, so that we do have water to garden, um, to water our gardens um, for our agricultural purposes and things like that. And um, let's listen to this, it should start. I, I want you to think about the word ohia. And here is a gentleman Noah Gomes, who's going to tell us a little bit about the word and inherent in the word is this concept. Some people say that you can break down the word ohia to a root word, ohi. And they'll talk about how the ohia is really important in its function of gathering water for the land, gathering up this rain and this mist. If the ohia is gone, our dominant forest tree, what happens to the rain? If the rain is gone, what happens to us? Pretty pertinent question. Um, that segment came from a documentary that first uh, was produced and aired in 2018 called Saving Ohia. It is another wealth of information, savingohia.com. You can find the entire 30 minute documentary. I 
recommend everybody watch it. So, you know, oftentimes when I talk about OHIA, I talk about three important parts to OHIA. The first one being the OHIA's importance to our watershed. And so that's what I've just kind of recapped right now and what I've talked about right now. Um, interestingly enough, I just had this wonderful experience with a group of surfers at Tomba Surf who understand the link between a healthy forest and a healthy ocean. And they recently did a promotion with us uh, where they created a t-shirt, a hat, there was promotional material and information about OHIA and the importance of saving OHIA and how a healthy OHIA forest ensures a healthy ocean reef. So as I like to say, even the surfers get it. Even the surfers understand the link between this healthy forest and OHIA and a healthy ocean. Um, the, uh, the second kind of category or area that I talk about OHIA and its importance is when it comes to kind of providing a home or life to a whole host of other flora and fauna. So in our native forests, there's a, a bunch of invertebrates. Uh, there are native forest birds that we oftentimes talk about. There are seabirds even. And all of these rely on OHIA for some form, if not all forms of their life history requirements. And so if OHIA were to go away, there's a chance we may lose a whole lot of other species as well. And certainly we don't wanna see that happen. Um, the third area, or before I get into that, I don't wanna forget our native plants because uh, OHIA oftentimes uh, provide shade um, to other native plants for their survival. But they, OHIA also provides a very medium, the very medium on which other native plants can grow, be them ferns or mosses or lichen. So OHIA um, is very involved and keeps very busy in our native forest, um, has a lot of, uh, has a lot of other people, so to speak, relying on it. So now we'll go to that, that third area that I like to talk about on OHIA's importance. And that is culture and the cultural connection that, oh, that people in Hawaii have to this tree. And I referenced earlier that, that documentary, Saving OHIA. Um, they did this great promo or trailer on the documentary. And it really encapsulates this relationship that Hawaii has with OHIA. So I'm gonna play it really quickly for you. It's about two minutes in length. For any culture, the land that that culture is from shapes the nature of the culture itself. We lived off the land. This was our high rise. These mountains were our high rises. And Ohia being such a dominant tree in the landscape has affected the way Hawaiians view the world. Ohia was used in musical instruments. It was used in tools of farmers. It was used in weapons of warfare. It plays a critical role in the ecosystem. It, it really anchors the forest. And without Ohia, we wouldn't have a purpose. And I called and I was like, you know, something's wrong with my trees. This is the sort of an epicenter of disease here. All these trees have died in the past couple of years. Wow, I built my house to look at my beautiful forest and now it's dead. So when we cut into it, there we go, first chop. You're not going to have very many trees at all after say about 10 years time. If the Ohia people's roots don't break up the landscape and their fuzzy leaves cannot collect water anymore, where do you think your water is gonna come from? This is a very important disease. It puts a lot of stress and pressure to do good work and, and try to get these recommendations out quickly. You know, if, if, if these forests go away, they're never coming back the same way. I think we really have to protect what we have. What I hope that we can do is manage it to restore some areas that are hit by it, to make it so it doesn't spread to new areas. We are a part of nature. The forest takes care of us and with this disease happening, we need to learn more about how to take care of the forest. 
know, it's that Hawaiian saying, you know, you take care of the aina, the aina takes care of you. So I feel like that video did a really good job of um, kind of recapping some of the topics that I, I pointed out, you know, the watershed, uh, host to a whole bunch of other flora and fauna. And then it also talked about just that, that very powerful connection um, that Hawaii has to Ohia. It introduced as well this threat that, that we call rapid Ohia death. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about that now. Um, basically, at its simplest, rapid ohia death is a fungus. Now, it's not a fungus that grows on the exterior of the tree. You're not going to see it on the leaves. You're not going to see it on the bark. It actually grows on the inside of the tree, um, and it grows just behind the bark in what's known as the vascular system of the tree. And you can see some of these photos. You can see where we cut into the tree and that dark staining, that is the fungus, and that's where it grows. Um, and basically what it does, let me get to that in one second. Here is a really brief overview, kind of a life cycle, if you will, of the disease process. Let me zoom in on each one of these and it will kind of help to illustrate um, exactly how this disease moves through the forest. So first of all, a tree has to have a wound. And by a wound, I mean a branch that's broken off or perhaps, um, Wild animals, feral ungulates have scuffed up the roots um, or there's been a big windstorm recently that's broken a branch. So it could be humans going in and breaking branches or scuffing up roots as well, but there has to be an open wound. And this fungus, the, the fungal pathogen itself is microscopic. You can't see it without a microscope and it can blow through the air. And if it enters this wounded tree at the wound, it starts the infection process. And then what it does is it starts growing, the fungus colonizes or grows in the sapwood of the tree and it blocks the flow of water and nutrients up and down the tree. And by doing that, it's basically, you know, starving it of water and thirst. And the first external symptoms that we see when a tree has in, been infected with this fungal pathogen is that the leaves on the canopy start turning this reddish brown. And it happens quite quickly, and it can be literally the entire canopy of the tree. And then how does it move from that tree to another tree, say? Well, there are these little guys in the forest, teeny tiny little beetles. They're known as ambrosia beetles. They are attracted to the scent of stressed or dying ohia trees. And these beetles, what they do in the forest, they serve us they serve a function and that is as decomposers. So when they smell a dead or dying ohia, they are attracted to this tree and they start burrowing in. And when they do, they burrow into the spot, the very spot where the fungus grows. And throughout this process, that is how fungal pathogens that get released into the environment and they can get picked up on shoes. They, the fungal pathogens, pathogens can get blown in the wind and then move on to infect the next tree, the next wounded tree. So that it's, at its very, very simplest is how the disease process works. Now this is on Kauai, um, what the distribution of rapid ohia death looks like. We heard earlier in that video clip that on, and we saw some photos, some pretty dramatic photos of tree loss, ohia loss on Hawaii Island. And the number that uh, scientists are using is an, is an estimate, but they estimate over a million trees there have died of this disease, unfortunately. Um, Kauai, though, we are not anywhere near that number. Um, we have confirmed thus far just shy of a total of 300 trees that have died of one of these two fungal species that fall under the umbrella rapid ohia death. And this is the distribution of it. The first one was found in 2018, May of 2018, in the Molawa'a area. Um, and then it has moved, as you can see, around the island. The most recent detection that I wanna talk about here is this one that hopefully you can see with my cursor. It's this red dot, and it is a tree in the Alakai Plateau. Here was an article that was in the local paper about it. There were articles in the Honolulu Star Advertiser, there were stories on HPR, 
So it got quite a bit of coverage. And the reason why this was important and notable is because the Alakai Plateau is one of the most biodiverse areas of the entire archipelago all throughout Hawaii. So um, there are lots of other flora and fauna. This is where a, quite a few of our remaining forest birds survive and eke out a living. So it's really concerning to us um, that there was this tree that detected positive of Ceratocystis leucoohea at the Alakai. Typically, what our field crew will do, and you'll hear from them in a minute, is they will fell a tree, meaning they will cut it down. And by cutting it down, that reduces the fungal pathogen from getting and escaping into the wind column. Unfortunately, in places like the Alakai, where there's a whole lot of ohia growing, um, if you cut one down, you may injure a nearby healthy one. So what we elected to do there is instead of felling it, we're trying something new. And it is kind of a new, um, it's a new trial that's being done in the state. And it could be very useful for other places across the island and even on Kauai or Maui or Oahu where there hasn't been a great distribution of this disease. Basically, it's a beetle repellent. So the tree gets these, uh, it's this compounded blob that gets put on four parts of the tree. And the whole idea, it's kind of very fascinating. It repels beetles. And the way it does that is that it puts out a scent to other beetles that other beetles smell. And it basically tells these other beetles like, this tree is full up of beetles. You know, there's a no vacancy sign that's been put on the tree go find another tree. And so this is a trial. We're in the midst of the research. We don't have results of it yet. Hopefully in like within a year, we'll have a good idea on whether or not this is an effective way to potentially treat other ohia trees that test positive for Ceratocystis leucoohia, especially in um, high value areas. So it's, it's novel what we feel like this is something that Kauai can be adding to the research base that's being done to save Ohia across the state. Um, and we're pretty excited about it. We're hopeful, we've got our fingers crossed, um, you know, and just hoping that this works. So hopefully that just gave you a quick overview of why Ohia is important, this, the state of rapid Ohia death on Kauai. And then the last thing, the last slide I wanna share with you is one of the most important things you can do to help is biosanitation. And this is true for all of our native species, flora and fauna, you know, before and after you go into the forest, cut as much mud off your boots as possible. And then the second step is to spray with isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Um, I'm gonna pause there because I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking and I'm gonna see if um, we have any questions. So, Kaylin, are you monitoring the chat or Julia? I'm looking at the chat and there's one question. <clears throat> it says, where did these beetles come from and what else do they feed on? Hmm. Okay, well, great question, Jill McIntyre. I see it now. Um, that's another actually interesting bit of research that we are just finalizing on Kauai. We had um, a, a researcher from Hawaii Island over here in the last uh, one to two years and she was actually capturing these beetles, trying to find out uh, what species they are. Um, and um, they do fall into this ambrosia beetle family. And some of them are non-native, um, but there are sometimes native ones that are participating in the decomposing process. What else do they feed on? I, I know that they have a particular taste for um, albizia. And I don't know that they are necessarily species, you know, tree species specific. Um, but as far as what else they're feeding on, I'm not sure. I do think we have JB Friday in the house, who was also featured in that clip that we shared earlier. JB, feel free to pop in if you want to if you want to elaborate on that anymore. Otherwise, let's see. Anybody else have any questions on Facebook? No. Didn't see anything on Facebook. No questions on Facebook. Okay, great. I would like to introduce um, our two field workers extraordinaire, our boots on the ground people. These are the people who really do all of the work in trying to save Ohia. And that is Kelly Harshman, who's with DOPA, and Brigan Klein, who is with KISC. So welcome. 
Um, real quick, I just, because if there's any students, you know, who tune in, we always like to share how you got to do the cool things that you do, because you guys get to do some really cool stuff. They fly, homes, they fly in helicopters, you know, they're hiking to some cool places which have beautiful views, um, but they're also doing hard work. Um, so, Callie, if you would let us know, how did you get, what was the career path you took to get to this job that you have with DOFA, if you don't mind? Yeah, of course, yeah. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I went to the University of Arizona and studied sustainable plant systems. And it was during my undergrad that I got really interested in island conservation through an internship I completed on Rapa Nui. And then I also did an exchange at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, um, where I joined the Horticulture Society and I was introduced to a lot of the different uh, conservation organizations throughout Hawaii. And then after graduating, I worked, I did an AmeriCorps VISTA year with a nonprofit called Malama Kauai. And then I did another internship at the National Tropical Botanical Garden. And that brought me to my current position as a watershed field tech with the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. I'm so glad I asked that again. I've heard you answer that question before, but every time I learned something new, thank you. And Brigan, if you would share, you know, your story of how you ended up um, at KISC. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Bregan and I work as a invasive species field tech and rapid ohia death technician for KISC. Um, I moved to Kauai about a year and a half ago um, for a KUPU internship with the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. So I got to work with Cali a lot in the past year also. Um, after my internship had completed, I knew that I wanted to stay in Hawaii and continue to do work in the forest and try and protect Ohia. So that's how I am here now. And real quick, both of you, um, Brigan, what was your, you went to college and you have a degree in what? Oh yeah, should mention that. Um, okay. I got my environmental science from DePaul University in Chicago. So right after graduating, I moved shortly after. Great. You had a pretty direct path into this. Well done. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about what you guys do out in the field and, you know, maybe just focus it on like what you did this week or last week um, as part of, you know, this effort to save Ohia. Callie, you want to start? Sure. Yeah. So um, every six months, our crew does a uh, island wide survey uh, to find um, potential rod suspects that we later want to get to on the ground. And we do quarterly surveys for the priority one watershed areas. Uh, so we recently, just in the last couple of weeks, did that priority one survey. And we've been getting on the ground to those trees that we found during the survey to sample and um, see uh, what the next steps would be from those trees. And then um, in the last week, we also were able to get to a couple of trees in Ka'ohole Valley, which is the valley just south of Nualolo, to fell and tarp a couple of ohia, luku ohia trees that we discovered. Um, and the tarping basically just adds to the felling process to reduce the inoculum from the beetle frass, um, making sure that it uh, gets out of the wind column and out of the environment. And just to clarify on that, when you say you do these island-wide surveys, um, they're in a helicopter, correct? Correct, yeah. <laughs> and then you do um, periodically, uh, in between, you do oftentimes surveys by drone, correct? Like maybe hotspot areas or areas of concern? Yeah, so anytime we're getting to a tree on the ground, um, especially if it's a helicopter mission, we'll take a... Um, drone stitch so we stitch together drone imagery so that we can later analyze that imagery and see if we maybe miss something in the helicopter if there's anything else in the area that we want to get back to thank you and Bregan, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing lately so i have also been working in the past week to try and get um access to some of these rod suspects that were identified in these DMF, um, in these digital surveys that Callie was talking about. 
So just within a couple of weeks, you go from identifying the suspect to accessing the suspect on the ground. And then we try and get those samples that we take, like you kind of saw in the video, to the research lab as quickly as possible to see whether or not it's going to come back positive with um, rapid ohia death. And I think another thing to point out too is some of those suspects that we're seeing, it might be on an off day that we're hiking and something catches our eye. Once you start working in rapid ohia death, you can't really turn it off. So I think a lot of the suspects too, we can get from the community or mm -hmm. from our on off time. Um, but just this past week, we were sampling, I believe, four trees total, four trees total, where we went down Avavapui Trail and then Kahua Ridge Trail. So if you see any trees in the forest that have this red um, flagging around it with a date, some initials, that's us. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, and then just a couple sentences, if you would, Brigan, on what that sampling is. You know, when we sample trees, what is it you're doing? And then you mentioned that they get sent to a lab and that lab is in Hilo. So what is it, you know, actually you're doing to sample and what are, what's, the, what's the sample made of? Yeah, so when we do get to a suspect, um, the first thing that we're gonna do is kind of look around the tree to see if there's any beetle holes or see if there's any brass present. And that kind of gives us an idea of where in the tree we should cut in if we're gonna see that staining um, that you kind of saw in the video, which is these dark streaks on the inside of the tree. So you cut into the tree using a hatchet. And then what you're gonna do is take a drill get drill shavings, and then you're gonna get wood chips, um, which is just using the hatchet again to get a couple of bigger pieces off of the um, inside of the tree, getting that like vascular tissue that the lab in Hilo, which is on Big Island, runs their samples and comes, you know, we get the results later on in time and then proceed with how we're gonna respond. Right, right. Thank you. Because, you know, it always surprised me at first that it's not like you're taking a big chunk of the tree or a log. I mean, you really don't need that much of the wood sample. But the key is that you get that sample from where the fungus might be growing. So, right, you know, that's the whole, I think, key to, to sampling. I do see a couple questions that have come in. Um, oh, Barbara asked, or wait, Julie asked, where did the fungus come from? Where was it first detected in the Hawaiian Islands? Um, it was first detected on Big Island, I believe in the Puna district. And it there's actually two different species that fall under this umbrella of rapid ohia death. And they're both in what's called the Ceratocystis family of fungi. And the, We've got some researchers who are doing DNA research, genetic research into these two different species. And believe it or not, one has its closest relative in Asia. The other one has its closest relative in South America. Um, how did it get here? We don't know. And I don't know that we'll ever know definitively. Um, so then let me move on to Barbara's question. Is there a way to isolate an infected tree much like tenting a house for termites? Another great question. Um, this is in a way, this new beetle repellent that we're trying is in a way doing that, but you don't have a physical tent that you put over the tree. Um, it's basically using the power of smell or scent to repel beetles from coming into the tree and thereby releasing the inoculum into the air. Hopefully that answers that one. And then Jill, how do you protect the suspect tree from the drilling hole you leave, do you plug it up somehow? Brigan, I'm gonna let you take that one. Yes, we cover it with um, this spray that's called Spectracide and it's used when, when you're working in um, arboriculture to cover wounds of trees to stop insects from either you know detecting that smell or being able to burrow in. Great questions, thank you. Uh, any more questions on Facebook that I need to pause for? No, Halen, I see you're shaking. Julia, negative. Okay, thanks. All right, let's move on then. Um, unless Callie and Brigan, oh, I did want to ask you guys one more question. The most important question. 
do you think OHIA is worth saving? Why and why not? Kelly, you want to go first? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't think it's really a question that OHIA is worth saving. Um, I'll just say a small anecdote because I was there to sample the tree that recently came back as a Luku detection in the Alakai. And when we came up to that tree, it really was just a magnificent organism <laughs> um, covered in moss and acting as a nursery log for Lapa Lapa and uh, Hapu'u and probably like over a hundred native species just in one tree. And it really showed me how much of an ecosystem that a single ohia tree can act as. And it demonstrated very clearly that ohia is the backbone, backbone for a healthy forest. Um, so I think losing ohia would have massively sad implications uh, and uh, it's worth saving for sure. Thank you, Kelly, that was beautiful. I mean, heartbreaking, but you just really put an exclamation point on the answer. Brigan, how about you? What do you think? Yeah, I think that Ohia is definitely worth saving. Uh, every time I get to be in the native forest and surrounded by Ohia, just fills, fills my heart. And I'm really grateful to be able to be a part of this response to try and save the Ohia Onkloi. Uh, I think that Kim, your presentation did a really good job just highlighting why it impacts everything from community to the ecosystem. And it would be devastating if we didn't have Ohia. Thanks, Brigan. Thank you, Brigan and Callie, for all you're doing. They are the heroes of this right going on right now. Um, but let's move on. I know there might be another question or two. Oh, yes, there is. Let me just take these real quickly. Uh, Peyton asks, do they test it against a positive case? I'm not 100% sure I understand. Callie, do you know what she's asking? Um, I think she's asking about the lab. Um, mm -hmm. how we find out if it's a positive detection. And um, it might be best to compare it to COVID because it's probably, I don't know, you might be familiar with how they're testing to get COVID cases. Um, and they use the same technology. It's called the PCR test. So they use the genetics from the fungus against um, the samples that we send in. Great answer. Thanks, Kelly. And then there is one more question. Are there any predators of these beetles? Um, and I got to believe there are, but I can't specifically cite that. Can anybody, Kelly, Regan? I mean, that would be interesting to know. I don't know. That would be good to know. I'm going to have to write that one down. And again, if JB is in the house or any of our other rod experts and researchers, um, please feel free to answer that question in the chat. That would be wonderful and appreciated. Now we're going to move on because um, I talked a minute ago about how we can help save OHIA and I talked about biosanitation. But right now there is another hot topic and a really great way that you can help save OHIA and that is through advocacy. And joining us today to talk about advocacy is Kylie Lefebvre, and she is with CGAPS, which is the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. Did I get that right, Kylie? All right. Perfect. Thank you for being here, Kylie. Take it away. Oh, yeah. So, you know, like we were talking about, um, my project is to, uh, to try and get people to do more advocacy. And we don't often see that in conservation, you know? So um, one of the, the groups of people that uh, some of us in the conservation uh, realm have been talking about that we might be trying to get to do more advocacy and to bring that into the their world is for students, for Haumana across the state. And so we decided that we would try to bring some civics lessons into their classroom. And what better way to do this than to bring a real life piece of legislation um, into the classroom and have them work on that and advocate for, uh, for a bill in real life. And maybe one day they could say that they took part in creating a law, right? So 
um, that's where it kind of started off this idea to name Ohia, to designate Ohia the state endemic tree. Um, and so not only will this bill, you know, uh, uh, recognize Ohia for all of its importance uh, to Hawaii, right? But then it's also going to bring awareness um, for the things like rod and hopefully bring protections for Ohia. So uh, when we started doing this, um, we started talking to some of our partners in conservation, like the Invasive Species Committees, the Hawaii Invasive Species Council, uh, even some of our legislators. Um, and we brought this idea to them. What do you think of this if we were to make a lessons for, for the students and then try and bring about this, um, this idea for the law? And they all thought it was a great idea, um, especially uh, to engage the students across the state. So we did that. We contacted a bunch of teachers across the state um, and we uh, were able to give presentations for about 13 classes. Over 530 students are involved um, currently. And mind you, we only uh, really started this project in October of last year. So considering I think it, you know, we did a pretty good job reaching out, um, but it's because of the, the subject matter everybody's coming together for Ohia, right? So it wasn't too difficult to get that many people on board. Um, so what our project entailed was we would go in and do presentations, teach them a little bit about how to engage and then about why we're doing this for Ohia, right? Uh, so we had them contacting their legislators. Um, we had them submitting testimony for the bills once they were introduced in, um, in legislature and then to just go out into their community or uh, just in their schools to gain a little bit more support for this bill. Um, I'm gonna share with you a little bit of uh, some of the pieces of art that some of the students have made, which was really cute and impressive. And they were able to be uh, presented to the legislators. It was uh, sent to the legislators as kind of like a mahalo for doing this and for recognizing Ohia. Um, this is the, some of the kids from Le Jardin Academy um, here on Oahu. And, you know, e even they got the message here. They know sanitation. They know what they're supposed to do. Um, but they also know how important it is for the legislators to know um, how, it's, how important it is to them as well. Um, another part of this project, uh, actually by a request of a senator, um, he thought it would be a good idea to have little ohia seed and growing kits um, passed out and distributed to the legislators. So I put together a hundred of these kits um, that just talk a little bit about what ohia is and why it's important and then how to grow your own. So it's uh, just a little display for the for the legislators to have in their offices. Um, and then when it came to the hearings, well, we had uh, one of the first hearings that we had we had over 490 people submit testimony for that bill. And of course, the majority of them were the students, right? So they were, it was just excellent. Um, the second hearing, we had over 300 students um, submitting testimony. So we really rallied here. Um, so I'd like to introduce those bills to you just in case if you would like to be involved in this as well, um, whether it's just submitting testimony or you can even just call your legislators and say, hey, I heard about this bill about designating Ohia Lehua, the state endemic tree, um, and I'd like to support that and I hope you do too. So those bills are SB 2059 and HB 2202. Both of these have had their first hearings um, in the House and the, the, the Senate side, and they both passed. Um, the House bill is still on its way. It needs to go through one more committee, but the Senate bill has crossed over. Anyway, either, either one of these bills are still alive and well, and they need your support. So we hope um, to get some of that from you as well, if you could. And um, a way that you can uh, do this is, of course, to... Uh, like I said, call your legislators, but the other thing is to actually sign up on the Capitol website, and it's very easy. Anybody can register. You only need an, your name and an email. You can uh, register at capital.hawaii.gov, and then you can look up these bills either by those numbers, so the SB 2059, HB 2202, or you could just look up something on OHIA. There are also bills related to getting funding for rapid OHIA death 
efforts as well. So you can uh, put in your testimony for those too. So those are some simple ways that you can uh, get involved and you can actually download this uh, infographic that I created a little while ago, it's kind of specifically for this whole project. So you can scan this QR code or I can put in a link into the chat uh, so that you can download that. It's very simple instructions on how you can advocate and to, to submit testimony on the Capitol website. But uh, also, uh, we do have a special uh, guest here today as well. I'm going to just stop sharing. Uh, so Drew Kohik was one of the, the teachers of the schools that we have been involved with that has participated in this and is part of the reason, of course, of why this the bills are having such success so far. And so, Drew, I, I really appreciate that you are here today, especially, and that you've been, um, you know, so so involved in our project. And I'd like you to share a little bit of why you got involved with this and why you think it's important. Good. Yeah, thanks so much for having me and, and giving me a chance to say something. Um, so uh, a few years ago, uh, Kim, you had actually presented um, in my classroom and um, maybe that idea had come up that why don't we why don't we designate Ohia uh, as a state tree and we talked about the kukui nut tree already being the state um, state tree um, I mean I, I think it's so clear that Ohia is like this keystone species and it's super duper important and um, so being a part of like to help legislate and and teach kids really about it and then not even just not just teaching them about it but then say hey and we can do something about it uh, I think that that's, I mean, why would we not want to do that? Um, you know, I have young kids and, and I have a, one of my students on the call here, um, Peyton, um, and I think it really resonated with them. These are places that they really love and they want to keep around and we, we want to do something too. Like, um, you know, we can't go cut down uh, rod trees and we can't go fly in the helicopters. I mean, maybe, Callie, unless you'll let us, we, we would love to do that, but. Um, so we want to do what we can do too. And this was one small way. So, um, so Kylie, thanks for creating that. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Drew. And, um, Peyton, Peyton is one of the students that are, are in your class. And I would love to hear, um, what you'd like to share with us too, Peyton, if you would. Um, so like, um, in class, we had a lot of people come and present stuff about the tree and stuff like we wrote testimonies for two bills and we were like trying to contact celebrities and stuff to um have them come and talk to the class to like see if they could help us out, but that didn't work out very well. So. Thank you, Peyton. We'll keep trying, keep working on those celebrities. You know, you never know when they're going to come around. And I'm kind of curious um, was there what in your testimony that you provided? Was there a specific reason why you thought that Ohia should be named the Hawaii State Endemic Tree? Um, so in my testimony, I wrote about why it should be our state tree for reasons like um, it's habitat to our birds and it collects water while filtering the air. Um, but also there is kind of a bigger picture to it. Like it's the head of our culture. Um, it's near a lot of our rivers. It um, helps to make medicine. Uh, it's used in hula and like, it kind of represents the land culture, so. Well done, thank you. She got it all, like she checked them all off. A plus. <laughs> thank you, Peyton. Anything else you wanted to add, Kylie? No, just thank you both for being a part of the, the project and hopefully you see value in it and hopefully we can continue some kind of version of it and 
Um, it's been great working with you guys. Um, and I hope that ho in the end, we'll have a law and that's something that you can have um, and take with you in, in, your, in the future. And hopefully you can continue doing things like this as well. Thanks. Absolutely. And a, a shout out to, to, to Mr. Kohik um for it just embracing this project and i'd love um you know for if you would just to share your school because i don't know that we've shared your school and i think you deserve to be recognized so thanks kim i see lisa put um in the chat go hta yeah um yeah so you know i teach at uh hawaii technology academy right there in lahui and uh our director um is really embracive about these things um trying to get some um, some field experiences also up in Koke'e. And then, you know, hopefully this is just a, a part of the bigger picture of like the interrelationships of all of our ecosystems. And um, so, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be snorkeling at Anini and we're going to hopefully look at the coral there and know that it's connected to the watershed and uh, where's that water come up to from the mountains. And um, so from Malco to Makai, we can kind of see it's it. We've got to take care of all of it, um, and you can't just either or. And especially what you did with Tamba too, I think that's great to be able to connect that. So yeah, um, that was amazing. They just reached out to us, and it was like, whoa, you get it. I love it. Yeah, it's fun. People really, really do appreciate Ohia, and so it's been a great project to work on. And I love what you're doing with the students. Um, and Kylie, appreciate everything that you're doing to get this bill moved forward. Kylie did include a link in the chat, um, which was to get that infographic that she shared. And I love the QR code idea. Did you see me with my camera? I was like, give me the QR code. So I'll be stealing that idea in future presentations. But uh, the other thing I wanted to share with everybody is that at not tonight, but Monday, <laughs> I'll be sending out a link to this recording. So in case you know you want to go back and listen to parts of it or for those people who missed it, I'll also include show notes. So like links to um, Kylie's document, links to the Saving Ohia documentary that I mentioned, links to the DLNR video about watershed that Mr. Kohik mentioned earlier. Um, plus a whole bunch of others, like links to like that cool Zoom background, virtual background that um, Kylie's using and that Julia from Koi Forest Birds is using and that my colleague Halen um, at KISC is doing. So all of this to say, if you have any more questions, now would be the time to ask them. Do we have any on Facebook by chance? Halen or Julia? None on Facebook. None on Facebook. And did I miss any in the chat? Um, and or no. if anybody else would like to, um, you know, if I missed something and you just want to unmute yourself and ask the question, feel free to do that. Otherwise, I think we have a Mentimeter, right? That we want to do. Oh. Go I ahead. I got a Nelson. quick question. Yep. Um, uh, I, when you guys were doing the surveys around, um, uh, we found that one in the alakai any other potential trees like kind of how how likely do you think it is that there's maybe a few more out there uh well i'll let kelly answer that yeah so during the most recent survey there were two uh suspects that were going to get on the ground for in the uh western alakai but everything else looked pretty good. So uh, luckily we'll be able to ground access those trees and we'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks. So as far as um, anything suspicious closer to that tree or near the trail, it looks pretty good and really seems like this tree is kind of random. Um, Okay. Just, it's a unique, unique circumstance in that area, but obviously you'll be kept up to date if anything changes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I see a couple of questions, so I'm going to answer those. But while we're doing that, um, Julia, I think you're going to, will you do the Mentimeter? We have a, a word cloud slash poll, I guess you could call it, that we'd like to share. Um, and Julia will put the link in the chat. Or do you have that handy, Julia? 
I don't, she's working on it. So while she's doing working on it, working on it, you work on it. I'll take some of these questions. What's being done about educating visitors? Um, well, all of our, almost every single one of our trailheads has a beautiful, um, oh, sign. We call it an educational sign. It's 12 by 18 and it talks about the importance of OHIA, talks about what rapid OHIA death is, and it talks about what you can do to, to help or an, and or, you know, not be a problem, right? Um, that is one thing that's like at a point of sale, right? These are people who are in the forest, the most important people that you want to reach. But in addition to that, um, the Hawaii Tourism Authority has kind of refocus their vision a whole lot um, during COVID. And they're really looking at how can we create and generate and attract visitors who really respect our natural resources. And so we have actually been in discussions, early discussions with Kauai Visitors Bureau um, to talk about ways we can better educate visitors and perhaps even do outreach with visitors, be that like, um, my idea would be to have much like we have ocean cleanups that surf rider leads i want to have forest cleanups you know it might be pulling weeds uh, but we'd also do some out planting that would be uh, my dream in order to do um and are there lesson plans for classes yes there are some and that came from deborah um, Deborah, if you want to email me at saveohia at hawaii.edu, I can save those or share those with you. I'd be happy to do that if you're an educator. Um, meanwhile, oh, Amy, love it. I used the sign to educate a visitor today. That's music to my ears. Thank you so much. Um, and Kylie has also offered up her email address. And let's see, there's the link. So, okay, I'm going to share. Yeah, if you would click on that link and it looks like people are already doing it you guys know the drill because we've done this a few times now haven't we why is ohia worth saving so we started off with is ohia worth saving and and i hope that we shared a whole lot of reasons why it is um but you know why would you say it is worth saving i've got birds and water Akikiki, fuzzy, cultural, gorgeous, erosion. Thank you for whoever put that one up there because yes, a healthy ohia forest holds our soil in place so that it doesn't create that chocolate milk ring around the ocean um, after big heavy rains. So keep, if you would, answering that because I like to, it would be great to get a couple more up there. I like to screen capture those and save them and share them. Uh, KKCR is a place to have a minute info point for visitors. Yes, Barbara, it is. And we do, we have, Halen and I have great relationships with a few, um, with a few of the producers that have shows on KKCR. And we, in fact, Halen was just on it uh, like a week or so ago, but you're right. Great place for information. All these ideas, keep them coming. Um, so lastly, I want to say before we close out, thank you very much for being here. And, um, we can probably stop sharing that screen so we can all see each other again, Julia, if you don't mind. Yep. Before I sign off though, I need to check with my colleagues, Julia and Halen, Halen doing all the magic behind the scenes. Thank you so much, Halen. Um, anything I missed, anything we need to cover? apart from the last little bit that when they sign off, they're going to get a survey to answer. Yeah. Um, I think, I think we're pretty good. Maybe the only thing you mentioned it before, we are going to do another one of these first Fridays in May, May 6. And it's going to be an update um, about um, the status of our first birds here on Kauai. Yeah. Definitely one you won't want to miss. And thank you, Mr. Kohick, for putting the link in to the uh, HPR article or story about, um, it says researchers discover native trees are better for clean air than introduced plants. Excellent, I'm gonna listen, I haven't heard that. I'm gonna listen to it. Okay, uh, thank you for that plug, Julia. Halen, anything from you? Um, nope, just if you're interested in more talks like this, then follow us on all of our social platforms. Um, also check out our website, that's www.kawaiisk.org. 
Um, and yeah, just stay tuned for any future Forest Fridays we'll have throughout the year, as well as our YouTube page, if you would like to share this information with someone in your life. Fantastic. And like I mentioned earlier, we'll send out show notes and have links to all those things too. And we will say good evening, Pauhana, have a wonderful weekend. Um, and if you would fill out the survey that will pop up as soon as you leave this workshop, we'd appreciate it. Ahoy ho. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okie dokie. Is that just us? Nope, not yet. Not quite. Everyone just wants to hang with the Ohia gang. <laughs> that must be I it. get it. We're cool. We get it. <laughs> so it's I, happy hour. Maybe I should have the literally at the last second, um, the rapid Ohia death um, funding bill was scheduled. Oh, really? For hearing. Yeah, I just got the notification. When? It is on Monday. Oh, will you forward that to me? It's sure. It's 1769, I believe, HB 1769. You know, that's the other thing about doing this project, the advocacy thing. I'm like learning so much, right? Um, as, as, as am I for sure, <laughs> like everything. So you're doing great though. <laughs> you're like, look, look, it just came in. I mean, yeah. Kim, I do you want to stop, stop recording? Oh, good idea. It just makes it easier at the end. Yes. <laughs>